welcome to Have I Got News For You. I'm Rob Bryden, and in the news this week, at the World Match Play Championships at St Andrews, there's a surprise late entry by a team from the Continuity IRA. <laughs> <laughs> in Dunfermline, a divorcee tries to remain philosophical after his ex-wife is awarded custody of all their cheese. And there's a surprise in store for one client of a Birmingham sauna after he asks for a massage from someone with large breasts. <laughs> uh, on Ian's team tonight, a presenter who admits to being a compulsive liar and says she's delighted to be here tonight. Please welcome Claudia Winkleman. And with uh, Paul Merton tonight, a comedian about whom the Scotsman newspaper wrote, his humour is difficult to ignore. I do love a challenge. <laughs> Please welcome Frankie Boyle. <laughs> we start with round one. Ian and Claudia, have a look at this. Ooh. <laughs> Good sound effect, eh? It's trident. I don't know what he's saying. He's um, sheltering from the acid rain. Oh, look, it's a sub. Yeah. It's all good or bad, depending on uh, what you think, but this is Trident <laughs> and Blair saying... Uh... She joined the Lib Dems. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, and he's saying that we are going to make more submarines, but not four this time, three. And not 200 warheads, but 160. The problem here is it's old technology. Yes. You know, this is Cold War stuff, because nowadays the Russians have developed other methods of delivering radioactive material. On <laughs> <laughs> a small set of tuna. They said it's going to take 17 years to build a fleet of submarines. I mean, aren't there enough Polish people in the country? Can't they... <laughs> knock some up, knock up a sub? Yeah. But what, what are we doing with 200 sea-based nukes? Who, who's, who's the threat here? Godzilla? <laughs> <laughs> and we know from previous films that that just makes him angrier. <laughs> what did Tony Blair promise last summer as far as spending money on Trident was concerned? Wasn't going to do it. No, he said there'd be a full debate. And then he flew off to America. Because he had other matters to deal with. Mm. Mm. Cuddling. Mm. Yes, he... <laughs> <laughs> who, who, who was he cuddling? George. It would be nice to see them snuggle up, wouldn't it? Have we got any footage of that? Yeah, let's have a look. Yeah. <laughs> That's lovely. Isn't that nice? Oh, I mean, clothed would have been better. <laughs> um, <laughs> what are the alternatives to a submarine? You could have a land-based missile. According to the Telegraph, for a site to contain even half of Britain's <laughs> nuclear warheads, <laughs> it would have to occupy an area the size of Wales. <laughs> Let's not go there. <laughs> um, That's what a lot of people say about Wales. <laughs> <laughs> Tony Blair is uh, in Washington, and uh, did anybody see how he and Bush reacted to the uh, question on Iraq? Let's uh, take a look at it. You said that the increase in attacks is unsettling. That will convince many people that you're still in denial about how bad things are in Iraq and question your sincerity about changing course. It's bad in Iraq. <laughs> he really is an unfortunate man, isn't he? <laughs> wow. One senator suggested to uh, Robert Gates... Oh, hang on a minute, I'm jumping ahead there, because... You, you may haven't not said know... who Robert Gates is. The audience know, though. I'll, I'll come back from it, don't worry. Um... <laughs> who saw Donald Rumsfeld's... Rip... <laughs> <laughs> All right, here it comes again. <clears throat> Who saw Donald Rumsfeld's replacement? I'm not going to do it if you laugh. <laughs> Speaking of, of uh, matters in America, who saw Donald Rumsfeld's... <laughs> Paul, they listen to you, please. <laughs> laugh every time. <laughs> <laughs> Did you see Donald Rumsfeld's uh, replacement as a US no. Defense Secretary? <laughs> What's more, nobody in this room cares. 
Donald Rumsfeld's <laughs> replacement as US Defense Secretary, of course, is Gareth Gates. And no! No, 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 no. Hillary Clinton was one of the senators mm. at the hearing. Now, she is a serious politician with some gravitas. What do you think she was doing while the hearing was going on? Playing online poker. <laughs> online poker. <laughs> Let's have a look and see. <laughs> oh. Yes, this is uh, Tony Blair's decision to spend £20 billion upgrading Britain's nuclear deterrent. When it comes to upgrading Trident, there are a number of missiles to choose from, including the Mirage 2000 NK2, the Trident 2 D5, the AGM 129 ACM, uh, all of which seems very confusing, but don't worry, the MOD have checked it all out on the Guardian's nuclear weapons wall chart. <laughs> <laughs> Paul and Frankie, here's yours. Uh, this must be referring to David Cameron, there he is. It's a year on since he came into leadership of the Conservative Party. Had him having a party in a jam factory. So David Cameron's been leader of the Conservative Party for a year and he's been celebrating that fact. He's been a year in the job and he hasn't been knifed in the back by anyone else, which is pretty good in the Tory party. Mm. And he's not a figure of enormous fun, which again is pretty good. I do like that picture of him in the bike, because you can't see his chauffeur. <laughs> <laughs> Following at a discreet distance. He is highly rated on presentational style. Now, who could forget the moment that he met a real person by mistake? Oh, man, Pete, you're going to win it. Come here, me. You're going to win it. You're going to win it. Listen, you're going to be the next on your plan. Don't say that. That's not the message. Anyway, good to see you. Uh, God bless you, yeah. Oh, thank you, man. I've been following the news, you know. What do you do? Tell it, dig up your past and all that. That's nonsense. You're right. We've right. all been bad boys. <laughs> good to see you. <laughs> That's the new Home Secretary. <laughs> Who is Dave's brain? Is this Steve, Steve. Hilton? Yeah. He's a sort of PR man who um, tells Dave what to think. <laughs> He's the guy who came up with the tree. Yeah, that's the new logo, the Conservatives, the tree, because it's all sort of touchy-feely. But if you look really closely in the branches, they've hung an asylum seeker. <laughs> also this week, MPs from all parties say their allowances are no longer enough to cover their expenses. For instance, several Lib Dems have pointed out that the price of rent, boys, has rocketed this year. <laughs> And so to round two, the picture spin quiz. Uh, buzz in when you know what the story is. Oh! Ah, it's Paul and Frankie. Uh, French. This is a French, tele <laughs> French television station, the new Anglo-French rolling news 24-hour service. And someone's put a beret and onions round that newsreader's head, haven't they? Because no, I don't that's... think the French 24-hour station starts with a woman saying, good evening, here's a French national stereotype. <laughs> or in French. Yeah. Bonsoir, voici le stéréotype. Oui. <laughs> this seems to be quite easy to speak French. <laughs> <laughs> it's all in the shoulders, isn't it? <laughs> Why don't you follow any of the rules properly? <laughs> <laughs> what can you do? It's called France 24. No. It'll broadcast news in English and French simultaneously. Uh, standards of reporting are expected to be uh, equally high in both languages. There's a big advert hanging outside the building, uh, and it proudly boasts of the channel's spotlichts on hot <laughs> topics <laughs> and in-depth reporting. <laughs> Is the presenter that policeman from a lower law? Defending the channel against accusations of anti-Americanism, what did the director of the French Center on the United States say? F*** America. <laughs> it was initially the title for their morning show, but... <laughs> uh, he actually said, it's not an anti-American operation, adding, it's more than that. <laughs> <laughs> Meanwhile... How did Jeremy Paxman embarrass the editor of Newsnight? Oh, Buzz! You've worked on a lot of cheap shows, haven't you? <laughs> <laughs> we never got our own buzzer. Um, the editor of Newsnight has asked people to send in their home videos. I don't really understand why. 
but um, Jeremy Paxman is um, grumpy about it. He's got a point, hasn't he? Because yeah. it's, it's going to be pretty weird going from coverage of Baghdad to seeing someone at a barbecue falling into a kid's paddling pool. <laughs> Let's have a look. That's all for Newsnight tonight. Uh, Martha's being punished for some offence in her previous life by presenting tomorrow's programme. In the meantime, it's all available again on the website, along with our editor's pathetic pleas for you to send some of us your old bits of home movie and the like, <laughs> so we can become the BBC's version of Animals Do the Funniest Things. Good night. <laughs> Meanwhile, in Iran, the authorities have banned access to video-sharing website YouTube. Users are now met with the message, according to the laws of the Islamic Republic of Iran, access to this website is not authorised. Instead, here's a clip of a woman being stoned to death. <laughs> <laughs> Fingers on buzzers, teams. Is oh. it fat people are no longer allowed to do the can-can? Have they oh, been... Oh, all oh, oh, on the NHS! Oh, yeah, now this is where I come into my own. Yeah. Stop! <laughs> Paul dancing. Merton! Ballroom dancing on the NHS. Basically, fat people dancing means a lot of fat people are gonna die. <laughs> it's not so much an initiative, it's more of a cull. <laughs> There's always some initiative for fat people. Like, like last week it was um, they're going to let obese people into the army until they worked out they couldn't stop them jumping out of the planes after the food parcels. <laughs> it is that uh, the NHS is going to provide dance lessons free to people who are, um, well, fat. Um, what are the activities, along with dancing, that, that are being offered? Skipping. A reasonable assumption. Trampolining, uh, abseiling and Tai Chi and, and best of all, kite flying. flying. If standing still holding a piece of string <laughs> is your idea of exercise, you'd have to have been bloody inactive beforehand, wouldn't you? <laughs> no, but also you have to run down the hill and then throw it back up in the air and then run back at the top of the hill and get the string again. Don't you have a small child to do that for you? <laughs> Why do you think, or let me put it another way, uh, the way that it's written, um, <laughs> What makes the government think that dance lessons would be popular right now? Because uh, Strictly Come Dancing is doing very well and it's very popular, so I think the government thought, whoo, like a little limpet. They think that people enjoy watching it, so they will therefore enjoy doing it, which is a slightly flawed argument. I, for example, enjoy watching wildlife documentaries, but have no desire to kill a gazelle. <laughs> uh, how did the sun sensitively handle fat people dancing. Asylum seekers go home. <laughs> <laughs> they said, lard of the dance. <laughs> With Michael Fatley. Um, <laughs> how did Tony Blair trip up during a speech on the NHS this week? Was it that old joke, the politician getting up to say, the NHS safe is in my hands? I am sorry, the NHS is safe. <laughs> Let's take a look. Uh, here he is talking about a new treatment. The right care for strokes is now to have a CT brain scan within three hours, followed by aggressive rehabilitation with thrombolysis. <laughs> Inappropriate cases. <laughs> How do you pronounce it? Thrombolysis, there you go. And they spent ten minutes practising with me this morning. It's terrible, really. <laughs> and I'm the guy running the country. <laughs> I hope you checked that with Gordon. <laughs> this is the news that overweight people are being encouraged to have dance classes on the NHS. There are many reasons why fat people tend not to go to dancing lessons. They're a bit shy. Uh, it's seen as effeminate. And all too often, the lessons are on the second floor of the leisure centre. <laughs> One of the first things these dance classes will teach fat people is how to correctly hold their partner so they don't drop their chips. <laughs> so, fingers on buzzers. Does the post office announce new design for pillar boxes? <laughs> You have to switch your credit card first. <laughs> <laughs> they are making a fuss about the thickness of your envelope, aren't they? So they this, are, yeah. this yeah. really would sort out the men from the boys. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. 
This is the suspected shoplifter who tried to give security guards the slip by climbing over a fence. When they grabbed her trousers, she tried to wriggle out of them. <laughs> How did this picture come to be taken? Is it a reconstruction on Crime Watch? <laughs> As is so often the case, it was taken by a Royal Navy submariner. <laughs> God, those submarines have got some range, haven't they? <laughs> Inland. When she ran across his garden with the security team in, in hot pursuit, yeah. uh, he grabbed his camera because, as he said, you don't see something like that every day. <laughs> when she was caught, the girl was extremely shocked. But, on the plus side, the neighbour's roses are going to do very well next year. <laughs> On the subject of stealing, yeah. mm. who's been stealing cheese this week? Gromit. <laughs> <laughs> Sylvester um, Stallone. Sylvester, Sylvester Stallone. Stallone. He's got a new film out, hasn't he? Rocky. Rocky Six. And, yeah, and he's Rocky Six, that's right. And he's going on about 60 year old now. And so he tries to become a boxer. They said, look, you can't box another man now, you're too old, but you can box a huge lump of cheese. <laughs> it's called Rock Four. Yes. <laughs> There's been a spate of cheese raids... Sounds like a two-run, you see. Uh, a spate of cheese raids in Italy. <laughs> Gangs have been hijacking lorries and stealing huge wheels of Parmesan. Mm. Fingers on buzzers for our next picture. Uh, this is the poor thing that happened in Australia, wasn't it? We were doing so well in the match against Australia and the Ashes, and I didn't see the last bit, but we fell over. They started bowling at us in a way that we didn't like. So we're 2-0 down in a 5-0 series, and uh, that's the way it is. Very sad. And Paul's right. It was incredibly unfair. They started bowling the ball straight at the stumps. Yeah. Unbelievably bad. I thought we had an agreement about that. We had an agreement about that, didn't we? Yeah, I thought yeah. they weren't going to do that. To be fair, though, in the second test, the English did ask some questions of the Australians, like, how do you play cricket? <laughs> and why are we so shit? Does Scotland have a team? <laughs> they do, though. They have a cricket team, don't they? Cricket is uh, cricket's widely practised in Scotland yeah. as a homosexual martial art. <laughs> Does that include the stumps? <laughs> <laughs> it's pretty much exclusively the stumps. Really? <laughs> How did the Sydney Herald describe the England players? Not very good. <laughs> <laughs> they said, like medieval royals with syphilis. <laughs> <laughs> they went suddenly mad. <laughs> What has sledging got to do with the whole of the cricketing? Uh, sledging is, is what they say, you know, when cricketers come in and they, they make various remarks, you know, yeah. various things. You know, there was one famous one, it was apocryphal. Somebody said to Shane Warne, hey, Shane, why are you so fat? And he says, well, because every time I f*** your wife, she gives me a biscuit. <laughs> yes, we, we are talking about... England's disastrous performance in the second test. A retired England captain Alex Stewart, who's heading out to Perth to watch the next test, told the son, I'm taking my gear with me. Yes, well, drugs are probably the only way to get through now. <laughs> but hey, never mind, all you English sports fans. You've still got the football. Ooh, I, um, you've still got the rugby. <laughs> Come on, Tim. Um... <laughs> Time now for the odd one out. Ken Livingston, Adolf Hitler, Ronald McDonald, and polonium. <laughs> yes, Ian and Claudia. The only thing I know about polonium is there's a restaurant called The Polonium in Sheffield. I don't think it's been a good week for them. <laughs> also, McDonald's has closed down in Devon in a small town because nobody was eating there. We're getting a theme here. The Hitler restaurant. Yeah. <laughs> Golders Green. Green. <laughs> <laughs> Very bad business. Very bad yeah. business. No one goes. So maybe, there, maybe there's a place called Ken's. Mm. Or is there the Red Ken? Well, you're going to be pleasantly surprised because the answer is they've all had a restaurant named after them, <laughs> apart from Ronald McDonald, who was named after a chain of restaurants. So, so we're right. Yeah, well, yeah, Basically. yeah. That's why I said you'll be pleasantly surprised. Um, <laughs> Did they pick an odd one out? No. Oh, hang on. Yeah, good point. <laughs> yeah, not so fast. <laughs> the answer is Ronald McDonald. No! <laughs> I gave it away, didn't I? Yeah. Let's just let's let's forget that. Um, 
<laughs> they've all had a restaurant named after them, uh, apart from Ronald McDonald, who was named after a chain of restaurants. So, Ken Livingston, let's have a look there. Uh, Ken has a restaurant that specialises in coffee, named after him in India. <laughs> a Ken <laughs> Livingston coffee, coffee shop. Adolf Hitler, a restaurant in Bombay, was named after Hitler, but has since been renamed after protests from the Jewish community. Have a look. Hitler's Cross. That's the outside. <laughs> oh! I know, I know. It's outrageous. Look, they've got themed uniform. <laughs> It's the Hitler's Cross restaurant. Uh, it only opened recently, but according to the business plan, it's going to last for a thousand years. Um, <laughs> Polonium, a Polish restaurant in Sheffield. Now, it's been going for a year and a half, and its owner told The Sun, I never imagined when I opened the restaurant that Polonium would be on most people's lips inside 18 months. <laughs> Time now for the Missing Words round, which this week features the official publication of the Society of Inkwell Collectors, the Stained what? Finger magazine. <laughs> so let's start with guacamole makers sued for using what? Carol Smiley for sex? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> mashed up peas. Mashed up peas, that's what it is. Isn't it? No avocado. Too little avocado. Oh. Mm. Food companies are being taken to court because their guacamole contains only 2% avocado, which means people would have to eat 50 containers worth in one sitting just to get one of their five fruit and veg a day. <laughs> Luckily, this story's from America, so they do. <laughs> Next, mystery of seal found stranded in what? Is it boarding council job? <laughs> verge. Lane. You yes. know this, don't yes, you? Yes, he was in a little verge next to the road. And a girl was driving along and saw a seal pup. Yeah. That's damn good. The answer is country lane. It's the That's story. Said. She said verge before you said lane. Yes, to be but fair. verge isn't the headline. <laughs> she might have said potato, that doesn't help. <laughs> it's not who says something first, it's whether it's near the answer. <laughs> Otherwise, the quiz format is kind of sort of lost a little when bit. When it was... One goose! It... Yes, well, <laughs> technically speaking, he's not the Home Secretary, but you were first, so I'll have to give that to you. <laughs> I think he's strictly um, going not only by the rules, but by the story, because the seal obviously wasn't found in the middle of the country lane, or it would have been very flat. Um, <laughs> it was found in the verge of a country lane. Are That's you suggesting that a seal in the middle of a lane that British motorists will just, just <laughs> drive over it? <laughs> Yeah. Oh, there's a seal there, Dominic. How many points for that? Oh, let's see. <laughs> let's go in the field. Never mind. This is a Range Rover. <laughs> Will you like this, Dran Widdicombe? No, we like her. <laughs> <laughs> Don't clap him. <laughs> a couple who picked the seal up from the side of the road took him home to the village of Carnforth, which infuriated the seal because he was holding a cardboard sign saying Glasgow. <laughs> <laughs> Next. Unfortunately, the Museum of Writing in London has yet to what? Close. <laughs> <laughs> open. It's, yes, open. It's from the Stained Finger magazine, funnily yeah. enough. Uh, talking about a visit to England, Lisa M. Sammons writes in the Stained Finger, <laughs> Just when I thought the trip couldn't get any better, I walked into the Birmingham Pen Museum. <laughs> She'll be dining out on that anecdote for years. <laughs> Alone, obviously. <laughs> Next. What or what? Naughty Noel asks women contestants. It'll be a pun on deal, won't it? Go deal or no deal. Maybe. It's date or no date. Date or no mm. date. Ah, oh, yes. That's correct. Now, snow? who do you want me to give this to, Paul? Because. <laughs> <laughs> I want you to give it to the person who gave you the right answer. All right, OK. I yeah. just wanted to be absolutely yeah. clear about it. <laughs> Uh, well, yes. That's how we tend to do it. Date or no date. Yeah. It's, it's lovely Noel Edmonds who uh, invited deal or no deal contestant Kelly Napper on a date. Uh, during the date, Noel put some soft music on, dimmed the lights, poured some wine, and then asked Kelly if she wanted to see Mr Blobby. <laughs> Which, to her immense relief, turned out to be his penis. <laughs> Few will forget Bernard Barkoff's what at the Inkwell Collectors' Convention. <laughs> Massive heart attack. <laughs> uh, Light-hearted sexual assault. <laughs> Few will forget Bernard Barkoff's splendid Inkwell at the Inkwell Collectors' Convention. That's what it's going to be Inkwell, isn't it? It's, it's good, but it's not right. Is it a nib display? <laughs> I'm going to stop you there. Why? Um, 
<laughs> because the, you're not right. No, it's it's uh, <laughs> it's after dinner speech. Oh. Oh. This oh. comes from the stained finger. Its European correspondent describes a recent inkwell convention in France. I delivered my lecture on the technological functioning of early pump inkwells. It was generally agreed that visitors were not as numerous as expected. <laughs> Baffling, isn't it? <laughs> and finally, the Queen strips what? Twice daily. Cheap tickets available. <laughs> Is it Geoffrey Archer of his peerage, finally? <laughs> <laughs> it's the Queen strips MBE from Conman. I told you it was uh... Archer. <laughs> Michael Eek has had his MBE annulled because he forged a series of letters of recommendation. Mm. Uh, that's not how you get an honour in this country. <laughs> <laughs> you pay for it like everyone else. <laughs> so, the final scores are Ian and Claudia have 13, Paul and Frankie have 7. But before we go, there's uh, just time for the caption competition. <laughs> Philip, is that you? <laughs> <laughs> Look on the left side, that's the last time I tried to kiss a duck in a wind tunnel. <laughs> <laughs> on which note, we say thank you to our panellists, Ian Hislop and Claudia Winkleman, Paul Merton and Frankie Boyle. And I leave you with news that the RSPCA Fear some sick individuals are downloading images of cruelty to dogs just for fun. <laughs> As their latest campaign gets underway, rumours of an ideological split within the Green Party appear to be confirmed. <laughs> <laughs> and in America, it's down to the last two for the title of skinniest woman in Texas. <laughs> Good night. And your real mum and dad, didn't they? No. Don't. Is it Richard and Judy? No. Is it the Osmonds? No. Jam and Jerusalem at 9.30 here on BBC One. In a rare TV interview, Hollywood A-lister Denzel Washington on Friday night with Jonathan Ross at 10.35 on BBC One. It's not to be missed. Hello, I'm Rob Ryden. <laughs> Join me for Have I Got News for Your Night, 9 o'clock, BBC One. <laughs> it was me last week as Anne Whittacombe. No one noticed. <laughs> OK, can I just have a quick read through of it, because I haven't seen it? Hello, I'm Rob Brydon. Join me for Have I Got News for You at 9 o'clock on BBC One. <laughs> What's funny about that? What? What? What are they laughing at? It's the way you do it. <laughs> it's the way you do it. You, you do know what they're laughing at. <laughs> so will you tomorrow night. <laughs> <laughs>this a to z companion of how i got news for you is packed with rounds of witty jokes and captions from the series